Welcome to this week's EMBN Tech Show. We have got a packed show coming up for you, so make sure you stay tuned. We are taking a look at all the latest tech from all over the world to do with e-mountain biking. And I'm also gonna be guiding you through all those tips to take care of all your riding kit. Well, Chris, it seems we've got it all on this month's tech show from linkages to rubber and some vibration stems, right? Yeah, all those items you love talking about, Steve. And I think kicking it off, we've got this great linkage kit coming in from White Bike. So this is an OE part. Normally we saw, see this sort of thing as an aftermarket, aftermarket bolting option, but this is coming straight out of White, isn't it? Yeah, so it seems that there's two linkages. There's a Shape It mm -hmm. link and there's a Shape It Up link. Now, the yeah. Shape It link can raise your bottom bracket and steepen your head angle, mm -hmm. whereas the Shape It Up can actually do both. You can either raise the geometry uh, and also lower the geometry by having a lower bottom bracket and a slacker head angle. I really like the idea of being able to tinker around with your e-mounted bike. Now, uh, I've been fortunate enough to do this in the past with the specialized uh, bikes where I fitted a custom linkage, but mm -hmm. this is, is pretty much a first, I think, from a bike brand to offer this. Now, the great thing about it is you can change your wheel size from uh, 27.5 to maybe 29 inch up front. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you do that, that's gonna, that's gonna shift the balance of your bike. So the linkage actually uh, gets your geometry into the into the most optimum position. The possibilities here are great, and it's only it's only like seventy quid, right? Yes, sixty nine ninety nine. So great price. And as you mentioned, Steve, I think all those options it will open up to different size wheels and all those different geometry changes is quite significant, isn't it? So if you're a workshop tinkerer, I definitely yeah. suggest getting one of those kits for your white bike. Not that there's actually anything wrong with the, the white bikes mm -hmm. as they are, because we spent a significant amount of time uh, on the white E160 and E180 back in the summer. We did four days across Wales. We did a load of technical climbing and descending. Uh, and I personally would actually leave the geometry as it is, but you know, like we said, people mm -hmm. are tuning into the fact that you know lots of bikes now have 29 inch wheels up front and 27.5. But so yeah. it, it's all in all, it's 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 it's, a, it's good news, I think. And like I said, it's great that a company such as White have been forward thinking in allowing people to do these mm -hmm. changes. Yeah, definitely. But let's talk about rubber now, Steve, one of your favorite subjects. I hear Specialized have been pretty busy with the launch of some new shoes, right? They have actually. Now they've got mm -hmm. the Tufo Flat, which was launched a few weeks ago, uh, yeah. which is a lightweight shoe and insanely grippy uh, mm -hmm. rubber on, on the sole there. Now, uh, it's taken a long time actually for that shoe to be developed, probably five or six years, but I think they've finally nailed it. And it certainly, um, a shoe which will go up against the mighty 510. However, there is a new shoe in the mix. I do love right. shoes, don't you? I do, and I do love the specialized shoe. As you mentioned, it's always been that benchmark 510. I think everything gets related to that, but I've been pretty keen on the 2FO range. You know, Recently, I've been riding some of those shoes and they are good. Yeah, so the new one, uh, it's not only about the rubber, it's about the, um, the structural support to the shoe and the increased protection on the toe there. So the downhill version of the two faux flat is, is, like I said, a far more robust shoe. Um, you know, 145 pounds here in the UK, but mm -hmm. to me it looks, uh, it's up for the task, no doubt about that. It's been developed by the Specialized Gravity team uh, and uh, pretty lightweight too, so. Check that out on the Specialized website. Uh, continuing on the rubber theme, now one of my favorite tires ever has been the Maxxis Shorty. And certainly here in the UK from the months of September through till April, and often throughout the year as well. It has been my go-to tire. It's got a wide tread pattern. It's got nice high knob pattern to it. Uh, it certainly digs in and it does allow you to ride wet weather conditions as if it's dry. Now, I was slightly taken aback back Christmas time when uh, we did a trials video with Steve Pete, Brendan Fairclough and Rob Warner. And it did seem to me that old Brendan with the shorty twos was at a distinct advantage. However, <laughs> they are now. I mean, I'm not making excuses, Chris. I'm not making excuses. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it, Steve. <laughs> However, the great, no the great news for everybody is that these fantastic mm -hmm. tires are now for sale. So a little bit narrower, they're 2.5. 
There's definitely a like yeah. texture to them, which is a little bit different to the original Shorty, uh, but they're available in 27.5 and 29, 2.4, and a range of compounds and uh, sidewall structures. Uh, but folks, if you're looking for grip, that is a go-to tire for sure. Um, and talking about muddy yeah. conditions, Chris. Now, uh, obviously, we're getting to springtime in here in the UK. Um, but perfect time for a bit of spring cleaning, don't you think? Yeah, I think everyone gets involved with cleaning their bikes, but I think you really need to take care of your kit too. So here's a few little tips. Yes, it's definitely really important to keep on top of your kit as well as your bike when it comes to riding. Now let's start at the top of our riding kit with the helmet. Now every single mountain biker should own one of these and they do get plastered in mud, especially if you're riding out there in wintry conditions. So for the outer of the helmet, just a decent microfiber cloth, just wipe that round, get rid of all that gunk off of there. Pay particular attention to the rear of the helmet. Often you get a lot of spray coming up on there, so it's gonna be pretty gunky as well. And on the inside, you obviously got the pad system. Now these actually remove from the uh, helmet, meaning you can put them in the washing machine if needed, but a great product to be using if you don't wanna do that, it's a foam fresh from Muck Off. This literally, you can spray the insides of the helmet, it's gonna make it smell fresh and kill all that bacteria too. And also another bit that can smell on your helmet is gonna be the straps. Again, you can just use some nice warm soapy water on there to clean these, or the foam pressure do a great job. And one kit that's often overlooked when it comes to helmets, it's gonna be a helmet bag. This is gonna protect it when you're not using it. And it's also really handy to stick all those parts in the washing machine, your gloves, your helmet pads, knee pads, things like that. Stick them in there, stick them on a low uh, wash. It will keep them you know, from getting hammered by the washing machine. Then you're probably gonna have some eyewear to protect your eyes because you need to keep that safe out on the trails. Again, lots of options for cleaning these up. I'm gonna use my trusty microfiber cloth or you can use that dedicated bag that your glasses come in to clean those lenses. And obviously if you're using goggles, things like that, you will have one of those bags. So just a decent glass cleaner on there on the inside as well. Give them a wipe over that microfiber cloth. If you are using goggles, a really good product to use is gonna be anti-fog, like an anti-mist spray. You can spray that in there. Uh, and the same with glasses as well. Just stops those lenses misting up, especially when you're climbing up those hills. You know, you haven't got a lot of airflow going on. The anti-fog or anti-mist spray is really good. And I definitely recommend it if you're a goggle user. Now, lots of us use waterproof clothing for going out on our rides, particularly here in the UK. If you don't have a decent set of waterproofs, you're definitely gonna get very wet and very muddy. Now, there's definitely a black art to keeping your waterproofs waterproof. Stop that rain penetrating that material. So, you don't really wanna be sticking these in the washing machine unless you're using an additive that's particularly you know, designed for these waterproofs or a reproofing agent that you can add to that washing machine system. But a favorite of mine is just to get home after a ride and actually take the jacket off, hang it up, and just blast it off with the hose pipe as well. Or the other option you can do, which is one of my favorites, is just to leave it to dry. Just hang it up somewhere, you know, it's gonna dry out, and then just brush it off with a nice stiff brush. Then it's just gonna be dust on there because you're only gonna get muddy again, but it just saves you washing all that waterproof uh, material, you know, giving it a hard time by sticking it in the washing machine and doing all that. It's a, Simple way to do it, and it doesn't take a lot of time. And your shoes can take an absolute hammer in too, particularly on those muddy rides. So a nice little hack for winter is to run an overshoe, completely protecting that shoe from the elements. You just zip it off and your shoes are pretty much spanking underneath and they'll be dry and your feet will be warm. But if you don't have them, when you get back from those muddy rides, just give them a rinse off. Make sure you haven't got a load of mud building up on there. Then just get a stiff brush over them, give them a clean round, make sure all that horrible mud is off and pay particular attention uh, to the bottom of the shoe, particularly if you're a clip pedal user. Clean that cleat area out of mud. Make sure those four mil Allen keys haven't got a build up of mud in because when it comes to changing those cleats, you'll be glad you paid that area a bit of attention. And just spray a bit of lube over this, stop the rust building up. If they're damp, now a nice little hack is to put some cat litter into an old sock and put that inside. That'll hopefully dry out. And if they're stinking, get a bit of that foam fresh on the go. It's gonna freshen them up and you're soon gonna have nice, shiny, fresh melon shoes. Now, one that I think we're all guilty of is not paying our riding pack enough attention. I know when I get back from a ride, I stick it up on a hook in the shed 
And next time I bring it out, it's like a fossil. But get in the habit of rinsing this off as well. Spray it off, make sure it's nice and clean and give it a bit of love too. You can spray some waterproofing spray over there to stop the water getting into it as easily. And of course, you can get those zips, get a bit of lube on them, give it a bit of loving. The next time you take that pack out, it's not gonna be soaked and look like a fossil. And also on the straps and that and the back protector, these can, of course, absorb a lot of sweat. So make sure they're smelling fresh. Again, get that foam fresh on the go. Uh, and clean the backside of that pack as well as the front. Now, whilst we're on the subject of riding packs, something you definitely need to do is empty your bladder. Now, I'm not on about going to the loo. I'm on about emptying this out after every single ride. I know a lot of us leave our packs hung up with that Fausty water going off. You take it out next time, and you're like, oh, that tastes horrible because you left all that fousty water and there. It's gone like your local village pond. Uh, a great way of cleaning these out is to actually use sterilizing fluid for like baby bottles or denture tablets are really good at killing all that bacteria off. Get in the habit of using that. Some baby brushes are also really good for cleaning the mouthpiece out as well uh, and a big brush for inside there. And once you've done all that, stick it in the freezer, fold it up, stick it in the freezer and that way it's gonna kill all that bacteria and keep it fresh next time you wanna use it with the added bonus of adding a bit of chill to it if you're living in a hot country or going out for a hot ride. Uh, moving on now to a few more uh, tech products uh, of the month. Um, Porsche, Porsche e-bikes. Yeah, so generally car brands seem to be a little bit out of touch with the latest e-bike tech going on. But I think uh, Porsche have got this pretty nailed. They've done a collaboration with Rottweiled as well. Um, a full carbon frame here, Shimano EP8 motor, Shimano drivetrain, big 220 mil rotors on there. And there's two different builds in here, but they are quite pricey, Steve, aren't they? $10,700 for that top end model. Yeah. What do you think about well, this? Well, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, the, the spec mm. here. It's got 100 mil travel option on the fork. Yeah, it's still got 220 yeah. mil rotors. Uh, it's it's kind of a bit of a strange mix, isn't it? Do you do you need two twenty rotors? I mean, oh yeah, it's cool. It's big brakes, isn't it? It's <laughs> good to see them, and I think that integration they've got uh, in the collaborations. I think obviously Rockwild and Magura have got really involved with this bike as well. So it's got those super clean Magura MCI setup on the handlebars, meaning you've got those brake uh, master cylinders actually in the handlebars. Got no cables. It's a super clean cockpit. So I think. This is probably one of the best bikes I've seen from a car brand period at the minute, I think. I think they've got it let's, pretty nailed. Let's move on to something a little less expensive. 55 euros here for the kid reel. And now, when yeah, I, when I've I, got one in my hand. When I first saw this, saw this, it was a dog lead. It was a Christmas dog lead. <laughs> uh, but Chris, so, I mean, you know, as you saw on uh, a couple of weeks ago, you were towing some three and a half ton trucks, although there was some chat that the, it wasn't actually three and a half tons, but we, no, we, we, you know, we'll, we'll leave that one go. <laughs> Uh, but turn but, your kids, turn your kids mm -hmm. on an e-bike. Yeah, I think this new item, this is um, the brainchild of Trond Hansen. Now Trond was a former pro slopestyle athlete back in the day with me, but he's turned his mind to transporting kids around with bikes. So this is a really neat item, basically uh, straps onto the top tube and the down tube of the kid's bike. And you literally pull this handle, which is retractable, to pull them up the hill. Meaning that when you get to your favorite spot, you're not lumbered with a big tow rope or a trailer or a kid seat on the back of your bike. You're ready to ride and you can leave the kids carrying the uh, carry, uh, did, carrying device, did you, which is pretty cool. Did you actually just say that you were a former pro free ride freestyle athlete? Did you say that? Athlete, yes, I was Steve, back in the day. <laughs> Early 2000s, Google it, I'm there. <laughs> oh, so from athletes to vibration stems. Now, I think this mm -hmm. is a very uh, cool product here. I mean, it doesn't come cheap. $400 fits a 31.8 mm -hmm. uh, bar, and the stem comes in 45 millimeter uh, length. Now, we've seen this on motorcycles, Chris, um, the old, yeah. you know, sort of bit of material which sort of absorbs the vibrations, if you like. But mm -hmm. uh, this is called the Hammerhead 360. Uh, and this too is the brainchild of a free rider, but this is a, it's actually a motocross racer called Lance Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, think I think it's pretty cool, isn't it? I think it takes a bit of inspiration back in the days of the, maybe the early Gervin flex stems. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with those, Steve. <laughs> Basically they had an elastomer which would take that buzz 
out of the uh, trail. Yeah. But these have actually got a polymer insert, which again is going to take that buzz away. It's been tested on motocross bikes with some good results. So pretty interested to see what I can do on an e-mountain bike. But has it been tested on freestyle athletes as well? I don't know. I don't know. Now, uh, <laughs> another new product here, hot new products from Trans X Drop. This is a dropper mm -hmm. post. This Trans X Drop has got some, some nice features to it. It's a nice, um, keeps everything pretty flush and, and the height adjustments, yeah. which you can uh, which you can fine, got, fine tune there. Yeah, so it's got an inbuilt seat clamp in, so it's an all-in-one seat post and seat clamp unit, meaning that you can actually adjust the height of that drop via uh, a lever that's actually under the seat. This isn't how you drop and raise the post, by the way. You have a traditional lever on the bar, but this will actually tailor the fit to suit the bike. So no longer do you need a 100 mil length drop of your post or a 150 or a 200 mil. You can actually set that at a custom drop to suit the bike. So some pretty interesting stuff there going from TransX and TransX tend to be a bit more of a budget brand. So I think it's gonna be a good price point on this. And again, I can see why it's won those uh, awards, definitely. Did you remember the, the seat posts, some of the, some of the early seat posts actually did have a lever just under the mm -hmm. seat. I quite liked those actually, because- I think weren't any Crank Brothers did that, yeah, didn't they, they originally? Weren't, there weren't yeah. any cables involved and mm -hmm. you know, very, a very simple way to, you know, raise or lower your seat posts. But uh, yeah. You just got to you take your butt hand off the bars. That's the only downside for that one, I suppose. But yeah, I think TransX could be onto something there. Not ideal, is it? But then again, as a pro free road <laughs> athlete, I'm sure you could have done that quite easily, yeah? A <laughs> bar spintered seat drop. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, a cool little product here, folks, is the Ninja GoPro mount, which allows you to mount your GoPro vertically for those of you mm -hmm. who are. Uh, social media inclined. Uh, I'm sure you've used one of these, won't you, Chris? I'm not too hot on my stories, but I can see the appeal for this. So traditionally, those uh, GoPros record the footage as kind of landscape, and for Instagram stories and Facebook stories, you need that footage vertically. So this is the mount that's going to tip your GoPro up and get it in the right place. And it's coming in at an amazing price as well, 17 euros for this. Yeah. So I think it's good, definitely. Well, folks, some great new products there for March 2021. Um, I'm particularly interested to check out the vibration stem, but also those shape it up linkages. I think white could certainly be set in a trend there for people to adjust their bike. Let us know your thoughts, folks, on, you know, do you actually need to adjust your e-mounted bike? Like I said, that white mm -hmm. is already a great bike, but um, clearly some people feel that they need to change it. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to dragging my kids up the hill with this kid reel. But let us know what you think about all the latest tech in today's show. Get involved in the comments. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN. See ya next week. Month. month. Next month. <laughs>